This video is supported by Dashlane. For years, NASA has been talking about getting us back to the moon. But of course, it's not an easy task and it requires a combination of effort from various organizations. Just the rocket alone has cost NASA over $17 billion in the past eight years. It's called the Space Launch System, and once it's complete, it will be the most powerful rocket operational. But the only problem is this, it's getting delayed again. It's time for us to come to this realization that the most reliable and competitive way of getting us back to the moon in the 21st century is the commercial way. The Falcon Heavy is perhaps the best option here. Our fascination of the moon goes back thousands of years. In ancient China, a Chinese goddess named Chang'e was believed to live on the moon with a jade rabbit. Chang'e and Yu Tu, the jade rabbit, is now the name of the Chinese moon mission and the lander, respectively, in memory of this ancient tale. In ancient Greece, Selene, goddess of the moon, was a symbol of dawn. Like her brother Helio, she also has a chariot and she rides only at dawn. There is also Soma in India and Rona in tribes of New Zealand. Point is, across many cultures, humans are obsessed with the beauty and mystique surrounding the moon. In modern age, our obsession of the moon took a different form. It's no longer the mysterious heavenly body that we aspire to know. As we understand more about it, moon landing started to represent the pinnacle of technology achievement, something we discover and conquer. If we can go to the moon, there's nothing we can't do. So, we built Saturn V for that. It was a truly majestic vehicle and surely enough, it got the jobs done. With the tools technology provided us for the first time in human history, nothing seemed impossible, not even the moon. However, to our surprise, what's supposed to be the beginning of a new era ended up the end of a golden space age. The engine of growth slowly lost its steam. After 1972, humans never returned to the moon. The reason is simple. It wasn't a priority anymore, especially after the collapse of Soviet Union. However, this was changed in the last 20 years. The direction came from the very top. With Space Policy Directive 1, America is shifting its space focus to put American boots back on the moon in 2024. But then a critical question emerged. What vehicle is going to make that trip? Saturn V that landed us on the moon 50 years ago is obviously too old now. Many of its parts productions are obsolete and engineers that built Saturn V were also retired. Therefore, NASA and the Congress envisioned the Space Launch System, a vehicle that's equally powerful and equally awesome. But it turns out there are many problems with the plan, especially comparing with the rapidly improving commercial vehicle Falcon Heavy. First of all, when it comes to the viability of the plan, the foremost discussion should be centered around timeline. It does not make sense to compare Falcon Heavy's capability now with Space Launch System's potential capability in three years. Failure to deliver on time is equivalent to failure in its entirety in any other industry. If the original iPhone came out today, it would be a wildly insufficient phone in any stretch of imagination, outcompeted by its Android competitors. But the rocket industry is different. It involves highly controlled technology and it can easily be militarized to make missiles and it costs billions of dollars. Therefore, government support in technology and money is essential. This created a lot of room for bureaucracy and it was what has gotten us to where we are today. The only moon capable vehicle space launch system getting delayed again and will not be ready for EM-1 mission in 2020, making 2024 manned landing impossible. This would have been okay for Boeing until last year when Space Policy Directive imposed a timeline on the project. This would have also been okay if Falcon Heavy is not there. Space Launch System would essentially be the only viable candidate. Unfortunately, both hypotheticals failed Boeing. Space Policy Directive 1 has put a stringent timeline on the moon missions and Falcon Heavy is capable for the missions. More importantly, Falcon Heavy made it all on its own without NASA's funding. More reason to choose Falcon Heavy over the Space Launch System. Another reason why Falcon Heavy is a better candidate is its much lower launch cost. Make no mistake, if we were to send anything to the moon with Falcon Heavy, it will not have the spare capability to land like it did magnificently the other day. However, Falcon Heavy is still a much cheaper vehicle. 
around one-fifth the cost of the space launch system for governmental missions. Falcon Heavy's commercial missions cost $90 million, but I would estimate around $200 to $300 million per launch for moon missions, considering Falcon Eye's $152 million price tag for the space launch system. This much lower cost aligns with NASA's plan to go to the moon sustainably, making five trips to the moon per year instead of one with a space launch system. Under space policy directives, sustainability is an important aspect of the project. We don't want to simply plant a flag this time, we want our men and women to be making trips to the moon regularly. The last reason to use Falcon Heavy is competition. If we were to take away anything from the last 20 years of space, competition is definitely beneficial for the healthy development of the industry. The contrast is pretty stark. On one hand, ULA was formed under the merger between Boeing and Lockheed Martin to save cost and reduce wasted resources, but what followed was even more inefficiency and higher monopoly power. On the other hand, SpaceX introduced competition to the market, forcing its American and European competitors to lower their launch price and eventually benefited the entire industry. Falcon Heavy could be an example of what technology promises when you take efficiency from the private sector and vision from the public sector, great things can follow. At the end of the day, it would be foolish of me to assume Falcon Heavy will return us to the moon. It is now being considered to perform the EM-1 mission to orbit the moon in 2020 to test the machines. A space launch system is very much still the main vehicle for manned missions. However, here's one thing we can take away. Years of preparation has worked out for SpaceX. Falcon Heavy and its outstanding capability has brought SpaceX this new possibility of being a part of another milestone in the history of space. More is yet to come. Before you go, episodes like this would not be possible without the support from Dashlane. Folks, you may think that you have all your passwords memorized and secured, but given the hundreds of passwords we're expected to know, let's be honest, we could all use a little help. And that's why I'm recommending Dashlane to you. With Dashlane's US patented local encryption storage system, not only can you update and manage your passwords with ease from all your devices, you can be sure that when a data breach happens that threatens the safety of your online identity, Dashlane will keep you informed so you can rectify the situation right away. Additionally, Dashlane also provides a VPN service that again keeps your online identity safe when using public or untrusted Wi-Fi networks. So if you're someone who needs the ease of mind, try Dashlane with the link down below. And here's the best thing. All of that is free of charge. And when you decide to upgrade to the premium edition, you can simply apply the code CuriousElephant to get 10% off the subscription, which is less than $5 a month. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.